I'm Phil Yazbek with the Neuroscience Group in Nina, and I'm going to talk with you and your audience today about normal pressure hydrocephalus. Uh, all people have water in the brain. It's uh, part of our natural uh, anatomy, and that water is produced by the brain, and it's reabsorbed by the brain. Frequently, especially when people get older, they can have a buildup of this fluid that occurs over time. It can happen due to uh, brain bleeds, uh, it can happen due to trauma, but it can also happen spontaneously. These people end up with a clinical syndrome or a triad of three problems. They have difficulty walking where their uh, gait is described as magnetic. It's as though their feet are stuck to the ground. They have difficulty with bladder control where they may have urgency, which means they have to get to the bathroom right away, or they may have incontinence, which means that they lose control over their bladder. Lastly, they have a slowing of their thought processes, um, and they're not as sharp as they used to be. In fact, years ago, this was one of the few treatable causes of dementia for patients who presented with mostly thought or cognitive problems. Typically, these patients present to their primary care doctors and may end up with a CAT scan or an MRI, and that would prompt referral to a neurosurgeon like myself or possibly a neurologist um, that is to say, one of my non-operating partners. During that initial evaluation, we'll talk with the patient about their symptoms and examine them. And if we feel that their clinical syndrome and their imaging studies are consistent with normal pressure hydrocephalus, we'll refer them for what's called a lumbar puncture, more commonly known as a spinal tap. And by doing a spinal tap and removing some of that brain spinal fluid, we'll see how the patient's walking and bladder control and thought processes improve. We also have our therapists check those patients before and after their spinal tap, and we actually do discrete measurements on how fast they walk, how uh, stable they are in turning, and how stable they are on their feet. As well, we'll talk with the family about how the patient did over the few days after the spinal tap in terms of their sharpness and their bladder control. If we find that the patient has a positive response to these diagnostic measures, then the patient is considered a candidate for what's called a brain shunt, or more commonly referred to as a VP shunt. The letters VP just refer to where the shunt starts and where it finishes, but in general terms, we end up making a hole in the back of the skull here, with the patient obviously asleep, and putting in a three-part shunt that includes a tube that runs from the water area in the brain through a valve on the back of the head and then down under the skin to the lining of the abdominal cavity. This is not a shunt that goes into the actual bowel, but it goes into the cavity around the bowel, and that cavity actually has the ability to reabsorb fluid. So by putting in a brain shunt, this overproduced fluid now has a way to be reabsorbed by the body, and hopefully the patient does better in terms of their walking, their bladder control, and their thought processes. Fortunately, for the last few years, we've had what are called adjustable brain shunts, which are really nice because they have five different settings, they can be adjusted in the office, and we can come to the best setting for an individual patient. We do see the patients back after surgery for a period of time. I'm not personally a fan of routine follow-up CAT scans or MRIs, but obviously if the patient has issues, we would reinvestigate things. And that, in a nutshell, is our perspective on normal pressure hydrocephalus at the Neuroscience Group in Nina.